All right, guys, so one quick tidbit, because I know you guys are going to be looking for these cards. So you don't have to know all the names. You can just type in uh, Exchange of the Spirit, and they'll all pop up. Oops, a little typo there. Yeah, if you type in Exchange of the Spirit, you'll get all four of them to pop up. You don't have to worry about knowing Keldo, Agito, Kelbeck, and Medora. There you go. So before we get into the main part of this whole video, I just wanted to quickly say, if you haven't seen my tier limit guide, I will link it in the description below. Um, it's a good place to start. If you're already kind of caught up with tiers, you've been playing or whatever, proceed. Otherwise, you know, I would backtrack to that video. But here's the Shizu tier vid. My friends, it's that time. It's that time. Shizu tiers. It's time to jump into it. I'm going to be going over how to play them, how to play against them, because let's face it, it's a potential tier zero format, and uh, you're going to want to know how to play against them as best as you can while also piloting them. Um, so got my co-pilot Annabelle here, very nice. Um, so to get started, just, just a quick thing to wrap your head around. Um, Kalbeck and Agito, they mill five. That's what they do. Other effects, don't worry about right now. And uh, Medora and Keldo, they shuffle three from either graveyard. Could be two from your opponent, one from yours, three from the opponent, one from each, don't matter. Um, they shuffle three. Quick effect can be activated at any time as long as you know a mandatory chain's on uh, in the middle of resolving. So um, again, mill five these two, and shuffle three these two. That's all you gotta know, right? So moving into the deck, I want to go over some stuff before we get into the combos. I want to show you some of the options and why some of the cards are here and what cards you will see, regardless or not. If you're playing something like my deck, there are gonna be cards you're gonna see. 100%. This deck is very versatile. Play it how you want to play it. Get your own opinions. Do what you got to do. Um, but before I do anything, I want you guys to know, Abyss Dweller, huge. You have to make this going first if you're going to be doing combos that mill your opponent's deck by five. You got to do it. Um, and because of that, I just want to quickly say, a lot of people are playing T. Rhino Heart. <sighs> I... I'm a fan of playing three because I'm trying to make Dweller. I want as many level fours, especially one that is a good normal summon. I, I, I would play three. That's me personally. Um, I know that people are playing two. It's fine. Nothing against it. That's just my opinion. Um, so to be aware of something, first of all, uh, Magnumut and Druus Worm. These cards are huge. They are very good. You will see them for sure. Mirror match, immensely powerful. Okay. You can banish a light or dark monster from either grave to special summon either of them. That's how they get onto the field. It's a quick effect if your opponent controls a card. I mean, it controls a monster. So, that being said, it's basically a quick effect DD Crow with additional follow-up. It's super good. So, Magnumut searches out Druus Worm either in the deck or the grave, which is very impactful because you're going to be milling so much. If you mill a Druus Worm, you can still add it with Magnumut at the end phase, of course. Um, so if your opponent hits a tier and they're going to fuse, quick effect, banish it, special. It's like having a DD Crow. It's crazy. Um, and because of that, something I wanted to quickly say is like called by, I'm having a hard time justifying having it if I don't have Magnumut at three, which you might play three anyway, um, don't be surprised if people playing three. I just have two right now, it might change. This is, you know, testing phase right now, right? So it's hard to say going second, staring at my called by and I can't use it when I could have another Magnumut in my hand. So be aware of these cards. Um, next one I'm gonna get into is Diviner. Diviner's a tuner. Diviner's level increases when it's normal special by sending a fairy to the deck. Yes, it does trigger the effects. Be aware of that. Um, you either want to mill five for you and your opponent, or you want to set up your graveyard with these two so that you can prevent your opponent from doing things in their graveyard. You gotta, you gotta keep that in mind that it might be more valuable for you to set up protection for you to go off than for you to go off immediately with Diviner. Diviner is also level two. Bada beep, bada boo, elf. <laughs> Um, Elf can bring it back from the grave. It was special summon, so you can activate its effect. You can also send an orange light or a second diviner to make it level four if you got to get into Dweller. Um, but mainly, when you send one of these, they're all level four. Diviner becomes level six. 
All you need is level four in the field, you can make your Barone. So that's the application of Barone. Diviner is very good. Um, some people are only, only playing one Diviner, that's fine. I like having the extra normal summon. I like having Diviner in the grave as an option for Elf. Um, so that's why I'm playing two. No need to if you don't want to, it's all Gucci. Um, on top of that, we've got three orange light. I kind of went back and forth with this and to, to put it into plain English, why I might've gone back and forth, which sounds crazy is because say I'm stopping at an effect that maybe it's in the grave. I don't want them to fuse. I'm down two cards. Maybe the card I have to send is either Kelbeck or Aguido. I don't want to mill five more cards for my opponent after I just stopped their effects. They're going to probably get another effect. So that's why I was having a hard time wrapping my head around playing this card. Um, the alternative to that, of course, is if you send one of these two, now you've got even additional follow-up um, to stop your opponent's plays. So that's the best case scenario. This is like not a great scenario if you're not set up with a dweller or like your opponent's going first. It kind of kind of bites. Um, but the biggest reason, D shifter. This card just stops D shifter. Stops it if you've got monsters in the field. Stops it if you're doing a backflip with your eyes closed. And you can just activate this at any point. Negate the D shifter. That's a. I mean that that alone. You gotta play it. So it's there. Um, again, you can send it with Diviner to make Diviner level four if you need to. Um, so it has application. Besides that, Squamata Beast. I am playing both of them. Maybe you only play Beast. Maybe you play zero of them. Totally up to you. I like having the option of having an increased chance to make Winda if my opponent is going to be milling my deck for me. I like drawing cards. Why not start my my hand off with seven if I'm going second? I just think that it's a, it's just it's good. Period. Whatever. Um, instant fusion, kick close, All right? Um, besides that, we've got the Mud Dragon mainly because Dweller, I want to make Dweller. This helps me do that before I do anything else even if I have to. Um, of course, terraforming for these guys, foolish. You can either set up protection by sending one of these or mill five or fuse, it's a great card. Called by, like I said, might get cut. Might get cut for three Magnemut. Might add three Magnemuts and keep the called by. I don't know yet, but that's what you got to be aware of is how good this is right now. Um, besides that, I've got one Celiac. I'm not playing two at the moment. Usually I play two, um, but this is where I'm at right now. Uh, to skip over the extra deck for a second, why I'm not playing these cards? Um, going first, this deck does it all. I don't need I don't need more reasons to win the game. It does plenty already. Does this add value to me going second? No. That's why it's on my deck. This deck does it all, does enough. Um, these cards are great. These cards are fun. If you want to play them, please play them. I think they're great. I just don't, for me, consistency, going first. I don't need, I don't need extra stuff. And that's what they kind of feel like for me. Um, on top of that, crime, you will see crime more now. The spell and trap negate, tournaments already didn't really have that. Um, and because of Scream, Scream adds a trap to the hand when it's milled, so you're gonna see more crime. That sounds terrible. Be safe, everyone. You're gonna see more crime, um, especially because you can send one of the fairies from hand too. Doesn't matter, it just has to be a monster and the effect's live, um, so be aware that that is gonna be a thing. Especially, you know, if you're playing like these triads, um, Kelbeck can set a trap from your graveyard to the field. So, um, that might be a thing. Anyhow, uh, King of Swamp, pretty good option. You can consider playing it even without Poly because it gives you more options for fusions. Exiton Knight, you're making more level fours. Side it. If you want to go, go in second. I, I think it's a good option. IP, I just have IP and Unicorn in here to remind you. This stuff is very live still. The Zero Boris, Bomber, Loop, blah, blah, blah. It's all still a thing if you want to keep playing that, do that. I have Kiklos here to detail that a lot of people are going to be making cherries. I mean, they're going to be using cherries, which again, they reveal an extra deck monster they have in their extra deck, and you banish all copies of it with the same name in your extra deck. So that's going to be running rampant because again, it might be tier zero format. Um, so the Kiklos being at two or one in your extra deck might just take up an extra spot and get banished anyway. On top of that, Rukulos is here. Rukulos shuffles the Kikolos back into the extra deck, so now you've got two different ways to recycle it. So, 
having to right now, not necessary. Um, a card that might be getting slept on is Heartbeat. Tier limits Heartbeat. Shuffles a Speller Trap that's on the field. It's quick play. Sends a monster from your hand. I do think that that can be considered a good side card. Going second against Floodgates like, um, you know, Dimensional Fissure, um, Macrocosmos, this Anti-Spell. Not that Anti-Spell is that good right now, I guess, but... You get what I'm saying. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty viable option, especially when you can ditch one of the cards here to either protect your play or get your play started. Um, so don't sleep on that too much. I think it's a good option. Lastly, um, the dangers. The dangers are very good, very cohesive still. They activate the fairy monsters from hand as well. Mothman level 4 can make Dweller even easier still, right? Why they're not in the deck? Um, and I just want to. Because I know people are fans of dangers, so I just want to give you the, the highlight as to why they're not being played. Um, it's because, say I've got Nessie and I want to kind of get started. Or you say I even have Mothman. I, I want to make Dweller. Mothman, level 4. Very nice. Let me let me go to make Dweller. If I activate this and I send Kelbeck or Guido, now I have to potentially activate their effect to mill 5 for my opponent before I even got to make the Dweller. So that's kind of where they're at. Um, I think Nessie's great. The au extra Aqua Fodder in the Grave, very helpful. Um, I'm a big fan of them, but that's the issue that I've run into that I can't really get around right now. On top of that, just so you guys are aware, Gravekeeper's Trap, um, you discard for cost to add a Fairy to hand. Dangers don't give a crap about cost. So if you want to discard your Nessie to search a Danger and a Fairy, that's a great card. So if you're going to play Grave Keeper's Trap, I would probably try to fit in some Danger. Um, but again, just jumping on the extra deck real quick. Um, still an instant fusion target to help make Dweller, like I said. Very important. Um, Zeus, because you're going to be making rank 4s more than you usually were before. This is, this is a good option, and if you're short, can't really do much, or you can get into a rank 4 going second to shut off your opponent's field. Um, this card's still great. Pairs very well with Sprite Sprint, because you need to detach an XYZ monster's material to bounce a card on the field at any point. And because it acts, adds one during the standby, boom, you can just jump off these two, right? Sprite Elf is huge, huge. Like I said, Diviner, level 2, can bring it back, activate its effect. Still a phenomenal card. Besides that, extra X pretty loose. Play it how you want. You want to play more links, you don't want any links. You want more rank 4s. You want more synchro options. Go for it. This deck is not does not limit you to a specific way to play it. Um, this is just my take on it, and I wanted to also showcase all the options not so much make the perfect deck. I just wanted you guys to be aware so you can gather your own opinions and make the best deck that you can. So, without further ado, let us jump into some combos, some interactions that you're going to be uh, need to be aware of, and then also I will show you how tragic things can get if you enable your opponent on your turn going first, that, aka not making Dweller and playing into their deck. So, let's jump into it, guys. All right, guys, so one thing I'm going to show you first before I get into really anything else, I explain anything else, I'm going to activate Shiren, which, again, will trigger um, the fairy I sent. The fairy I sent is Agido, right? Um, I also milled a tier limit. You always want to activate the tier limit first. This is for two reasons. One, so you can chain block it to protect it from an effect getting negated. But the bigger reason is because you're going to be milling five cards off of Agito. So now we've got five additional options to fuse with, which again, the Hadness activated before, we would have had to use Shiren on the field. But because the Agito to mill five was a second chain, I got to see five different cards that I could use. And there you go. We milled two different tier limits. So I can just use the ones from Grave instead of the ones on the field. That is just key. Always activate your tiers first and then let the mills fall onto them after. All right, guys, so first two card combo I want you to be aware of um, is starting out with a Protector and an Earth Fairy. So optimally, you would have Medora or just a second copy of the Protector. And this is because 
This enables you to make Dweller, so you would activate this effect from hand. You're going to discard an Earth Fairy to special summon the Protector, which also lets you add one to hand, so you can go ahead and add even a second Medora or a Protector, because you're going to look to make Dweller with it. Um, at this point, it's, act it's asking me if I want to banish it from the field to shuffle cards in the grave, because again, you can do that from grave or field with them. Um, but yeah, this literally lets you jump into a dweller without, you know, milling any cards. And I think that's pretty important to, to understand. Um, and then based on the one that you add, you could even detach that to have that set up ready to go with these two in the grave. Um, again, the alternative to that is if we go ahead and have the Kel back instead, when we were to go to do this, now we have to decide, are we going to mill five or not before we make our dweller? So that's kind of where the conflict starts to happen. Um, but again, with this, you know, with this option, if we don't mill five, we can make the dweller um, and then get one of these in the grave. So now we have additional support to stop things and we didn't mill anything from our opponent. So those are two, you know, kind of routes that you want to be aware of. So playing off that same idea, um, just to kind of run through it and show you some viable options. We are going to discard the Medora here. Um, let's add a Kelbeck to our hand because we won't be normal summoning the Kelbeck since we have a Rhino Heart already. Um, so we've got some protection set up already, which is great. We've got two different things that we can manage actually in theory. Um, and we also have the Kelbeck who can bounce a special summoning monster from field so we've got some good cards already um, but on top of that with our normal summon we can activate Rhino Heart here we can send say Havness activate the effect jump into our Kid Close activate Kid Close's effect and this is in the instance you want to go through with this play um, you can go ahead and add Shiren instead of the trap maybe right and now we're able to pop the Kid Close get another level four on the field we're gonna mill five of our own cards not have to worry about it um, and here again is where we could choose to mill because we've got um, protector and Medora um, but let's just just for the example of the video let's say we didn't have anything that we want to mill um, we can either fuse here right because we did hit a Merle so you might be able to fuse you might not um, in this case, we would be able to, so we'll go ahead and make the Rukulos. Now our Kikulos is back in the graveyard, and we've got two level fours in the field. So now, we are good to go. We've got a Dweller. We can activate our Dweller. We can also detach. Oops. That was not supposed to happen. I'm shuffling cards now. I'm sorry. Um, we can now detach the protector. It's back in the grave. It's effects ready to go to protect us and shuffle cards. So that's just another way to get into Dweller while also making kick close, potentially kick close, root close. It's a very good option. And of course, naturally, Shiren being the amazing card she is, um, you can always activate her effect, discard one of the fairies, and activate the fairies effects. Um, of course, in that instance, you would be milling five for your opponent as well if you do get rid of the Kelbeck or Agido. Um, but you can't win in life unless you take some risks. So uh, really up to you. But again, I really stress making the Dweller first. And I'll show you later why, as I said before. All right, so we're going to have a three card hand. I want to showcase Agido. It's a very important effect that might be missed. Um, it's very easy to miss these effects. And it's going to take a lot of practice to play this deck, I highly encourage you to test, 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 and make sure you're aware of the effects that are going on and you don't miss something. So, um, just to showcase it, we're gonna go ahead and activate Shiren's effect and we're gonna discard our uh, Kelbeck here. Now, we are going to use the Kelbeck's effect. And we're not going to chain the effects to, sh to shuffle anything, we don't need to. Um, boom, things have been milled on my opponent's deck. Cards were sent from either the hand or deck to the grave. And because of that, we can activate a Gito effect in hand, but first chains that are mandatory, um, like optional, 
mandatory optional. Good job, guys. Uh, effects that are milled, they, they are triggered. They have to be answered to. So if I want to activate these or not, I have to decide that now. Um, we're going to not activate them just a second because now we can activate our different quick effects, which are after those mandatory triggers. Um, so Agito, because cards were sent again from the hand or deck to the graveyard of my opponent, I'm able to activate its effect, bring it onto the field, and then also special summon uh, one of the monsters, Earth Fairies, from my graveyard. Pretty nifty. And of course, in that same chain, if we had to, we could have shuffled um, cards in my opponent's graveyard back into their deck because we milled the Protector and Madura. So, um, just off of that, you're looking at an easy rank 4. We could also jump into Time Thief here if we wanted, right? Glorious animation. We're going to activate the Time Thief's effect to detach Shiren, which is going to trigger the Shiren immediately and would allow us to make a kick close based on whatever we milled and get started from there. Alright guys, it's going to be a hand with Diviner as a normal summon, and I want to present this to show you, you don't always have to send a mill 5 with the Diviner, you want to send the shuffle 3 sometimes. So, in this case, because I can see my hand, I can understand, I've got a guaranteed mill 8 between these two cards, but 5 of those will be for my opponent as well, it's a shared 5 mill. So, I don't want to do that, I want to figure out a way to protect myself, and because of that, I can summon Diviner, activate its effect, and I can, instead of being greedy and milling five for each player, I can either send Medora or the Protector. I'll go ahead and send Protector in this case. So she will become a level six. Um, and now I have the ability to shuffle three cards from my opponent's graveyard, or two and one, vice versa, whatever it may be. So now, if I want, and I can I can justify the risk of sending the Agito from my hand to the grave to mill 5, so I will trigger that. I'm not going to trigger anything else right now just so we can uh, move accordingly. So I will say no to everything. So at this point, um, cards have been milled. Um, I milled another Merle it seems, but I'm not going to activate that. And because, again, the trigger of it hitting the grave, I have to answer yes or no to that first. Then we get into the quick effects here, so I'm looking at these three options. I'll go ahead and activate my protector, and at this point I could shuffle three monsters in my opponent's graveyard that might be problematic for me um, before things get crazy. So um, on top of that, we can go ahead and make a Baron off of those two cards, which is huge. So um, that's, that's, that's the setup the Diviner can provide for you. And on top of that, now I've got a negate as well. So, pretty good. Um, and I want to showcase Barone, just so you guys can see why Barone is going to be very good. If we go ahead and pass the turn here, um, in our standby phase, if I've already negated something, I'm, I'm ready to, to get out of my Barone. I can activate it. I can bring out Diviner, who can then come onto the field, activate its effect. I can, at this point, especially if you've got a Dweller set up, you've already Dwellered, you've already negated something, let's send five with Kelbak or Agado, and proceed to do all the effects from there. So, Barone swapping back into the Diviner is a pretty good option. Um, again, you could also send Protector or, or the uh, Medora to get even more effects that can shuffle the grave. So you can choose what kind of manipulation you want if you want to go off more on your opponent's turn or if you want to provide more um, shuffling. So that's Barone and Diviner for you. All right, this is going to be another Diviner-related combo. Um, this is if Diviner's in your grave, not necessarily that it started in your hand and you had to discard it, just if it's in your grave. Um, but for this combo, we'll facilitate it with Shiren discarding it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and mill three uh, for the sake of the combo. Just gonna activate Happiness. I'm not gonna mill the other 10 cards. Yu Gi Oh! Um, so we're gonna make our kick close. We've all seen this before. We're gonna send the Merle to grave. Not gonna activate Merle's effect because we are going to pop the kick close to bring back the Merle. And we're gonna mill our 8 cards. 
So because we need another monster on the field in order to link off into Gorora, um, we would, I mean, link off into Elf. We're going to make Gorora with these two cards um, and get into our Elf at this point, which Gorora is going to let us draw a card for free. And um, Elf is going to bring back the Diviner, not the Merle as per usual. And bring back Diviner here. Now we're able to act through Diviner's effect to send a fairy from the deck to the grave because I need something to fuse with um, and I want it to be level 6. I can send either more protection with Medora or the Keldo to shuffle cards or I can enable myself to mill 5. So let's just say we mill 5, why not? Um, and we even have the extra protection in case maybe my opponent milled something. Shuffle those back in the deck, get them out of here. <coughs> and then we drew a card off a of beast, why not? And this is where we could just normal summon level 4 if we have it. Um, and make our beautiful, lovely Baron. Very nice, right? So that's kind of the interplay that Splite, uh, Sprite Elf and Diviner have. Um, they Barone, Elf, and Diviner work very well together. Um, so let's jump into another one. All right, guys. So this is going to be, um, you know, an example of how to use Rhino Heart, keeping them on the field without, you know, sending one and fusing in the kick close rate of where Clyde Heart. You want to keep the Rhino Heart. It's a level four, um, so it's also water, so it can buff the Abyssal. You want to find ways to to keep Rhino Heart on the field. So in this example, we would just summon Merly. And mill three, see we, we hit our Rhino Heart here. Um, this could be from any means, it could be uh, Shiren milled three, it could be uh, Kick Close milled five, it doesn't matter. Just you gotta find ways to use Rhino Heart in a different manner. So, because we have the tier in hand, we'll discard that tier. We're gonna activate Havness as well as Rhino Heart here. Rhino Heart is gonna send Shiren solely because she's level four. Um, and we're going to make Kit close between the Merle on field and the Havness we discarded. In which case, and of course these are all interchangeable, right? If I had Shiren in hand to get Reinhardt out, I could just send Havness to fuse with instead of not activate Shiren. It's all interchangeable, so always be aware of that. Um, so at this point, we are going to activate the Kit close effect to search. We're not going to activate uh, Shiren's effect in the grave. We'll grab our trusted Celiac, and from here, you know it, we will pop our Kit Close to bring the Shiren back. We get to mill five. We get to take a look at what effects we want to activate. Um, we did. We do have some shuffle protection, so you could decide here if you wanted to mill five, yada yada. It's up to you. Um, but if you do wait, you would be able to get into the Dweller. He's going to come out at 2200. It's great. So, I know that in this example, um, if we didn't mill the 5 or 10, you know, off of these two, this is kind of it. We're kind of stuck. We've got Celiac, but this is, again, this is a two-card hand example. Um, it was not an optimal hand, right? We had Merlin and Havness, but there are ways for you to facilitate getting into Dweller, especially with Reinhardt. Um, while keeping it on the field. So that's just something I really wanted to show you guys. So we're going to jump into some full hand combos because I think it's one of the only realistic ways for you to get a really good grasp on this. So let's jump over to YGO Pro. Um, this is because I wanted to showcase the mirror match vibe. All right, guys, so this is going to be a uh, first turn hand. Um, we're not going to have the opponent negate us or anything, but we're going to showcase like a very appropriate way to go about this. So we're going to start off by activating Shiren, and we're going to discard the Rhino Heart that was in hand. Rhino Heart, Shiren, great way to start off the hand, and that is simply because Rhino Heart can activate, send a tier from the hand. So in this case, we're going to send the Merle. We will activate that Merle, and as well as the Rhino Heart, we're going to send the Havness with Rhino Heart. That's going to enable us to fuse afterwards if we want, or just have additional follow, uh, fodder for follow-up. But the Merle will shuffle and make our first kick close. Kick close is going to net us the Celiac, which is always huge. But main, main thing here, the Shiren Rhinoheart is a guaranteed 
um, Abyss Dweller. So now, all caution to the wind gone. We're ready to rock and roll. We can know all the cards we want from our opponent's field, I mean deck, uh, and not have to worry about any of it. So the um, Kick Close brought back the Shiren here. We could have, of course, opted into a different card, maybe Merle for going into uh, Sprite Elf plays. But uh, just just different routes here, right? So we did activate the um, Kelbeck to mill five for our opponent, and we also already activated the Havness to shuffle the Kit Kalos and the Havness to make our first Rukalos. So uh, because of that, because Kelbeck milled five from our opponent, that is going to trigger the uh, Agito from hand. Uh, and that will special summon another Earth Fairy from the grave. So we'll go ahead and make our Time Thief. Time Thief, just going to activate it right away so that we can actually just detach the Shiren, who's going to let us fuse into our Garora. We're going to summon the Orange Light from hand because we don't have any fairies in hand. It's dead otherwise. Let's make some use of it. It's a level two. It's going to let us get into our Sprite Elf. Elf is going to bring back the Diviner. Diviner can then activate, send another orange light, orange light again. Probably going to be a dead card from this point moving forward in the duel. Don't want to have to rely on having two different fairies in hand. Um, so we're going to send that, make her level four, and jump into our Barone, which will then again let us draw due to the Gorora. And again, the whole time we did this, we had these um, Keldos and Medoras in the graveyard for us to manip manipulate our opponent's grave if need. Um, so we will then set our Soliac. We've got Rukulos, Dweller, which I'm going to go ahead and just activate right away. If they had someone to negate it, we can protect that effect with Barone. And uh, this is where I talked about earlier. Now we can bring back the Diviner in the standby phase, activate it to either Mill 5 from, again, each player, but I've already Dwellered. So now I'm free to Mill 5 again from both, from both decks, and I still have more Medora to shuffle and manage the graveyards as I see fit. So we milled five here, we got a fusion, we can make Winda, we can draw, we can shuffle more cards from our opponent. Um, we still, that was all in the standby phase, by the way. Welcome, welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh 2022. Um, and then we were able to grab a card off the top of the deck with our Time Thief. And, you, you know, we've got Sully X still. So we've got that, she's gonna come back. Uh, if a monster would be special summoned by an effect of some sort, you can negate it. Um, so, in that instance, you could send the Celiac instead of the Rukulos, but we're chilling. Um, very, we got Winda, we, we're good, right? So, um, yeah, that's that's a good way to start the duel, is making your Dweller. Let's take a look at how it looks like if you do not do that. So here's our opening hand, um, pretty good hand, right? Activate, gonna get the Rhino Heart. Gonna activate our Medora to send Kelbeck. Okay, so it's gonna mill five from each deck. With that, we got a Havness, we got a Beast, we got a Merlee. Things are looking great, except our opponent <laughs> has milled a Kelbeck, an Agido, a Shiren and a Madura. So they're able to manipulate the graveyard for three cards. They can mill 10 potentially, which is great for them because there's no battle phase this turn. They cannot die, so they might as well just let her rip and they can fuse. We, however, did not mill um, any graveyard manipulation. We can, of course, banish the Madura off the field if we have to. So I will activate the draw card. <laughs> Whoa! I will activate the draw card with Beast, um, and I will activate, I believe it was Merle. I did not activate both of them, I only activated one, because I suspect that they're going to get shuffled, so I might as well save the effect of one of the two of them. Our opponent then chains Al Agido, Medora, Shiren, um, all that good stuff. Um, so, I chained my Medora to shuffle their cards back. And, uh, yeah, so then they banished the Medora to shuffle cards. So they're shuffling my cards right now. Guys, this is chain seven in the grave.
graveyards. This is bonkers. So they're gonna go ahead and shuffle my cards, which it was the tier limit cards as suspected, um, as well as something else I didn't get to catch. It's okay. So they activated the Havnus from hand since I activated the Madura from the field. So they're gonna get to mill three more. Um, we are shuffling their tier limit back, so they don't get to fuse, except they will, because they mail the Havnus again. Um, so there goes that fizzle of the fusion. They mailed a beast, another Havnus, another Agido, another Shiren, a Merli, and we mailed a good old Reinhardt Shiren. So it's fair, right? It's fair. Here comes five more. So now they've got more graveyard manipulation. Um, and we have really redundant mills there. We've already milled them early, we've already milled Shiren, we drew a Merli, so we're not looking too hot. Um, we will activate the Reinhardt and the Shiren. They will activate their Havnus and Shiren, I believe, and the Merli and the Beast. I can hardly keep up. They will also activate the shuffle cards. So they're gonna shuffle my Reinhardt that I already activated. They're gonna shuffle the Shiren that I already activated and another Shiren just for anti-fodder. So we're on chain six, they're gonna draw. That was chain seven, I think, actually. Um, they're looking to fuse, which they will. They're gonna make their first kit close. Then they're gonna make a Winda on top of that. They are going to bring out a Reinhardt, why not, by sending the Suliak, which is a trap card, so now they get to <laughs> search a card. I do, excuse me, I do get the pop with my field spell, um, but they're going to add, add, send, and then I will pop and thankfully banish the Reinhardt. So, thankfully, after all this, I still had a Reinhardt in hand. And somehow, by the grace of God, I remembered, which I didn't activate yet, which was Merli. So I was able to make a Clyde Heart at least as my first special summon against the window. We're gonna get rid of the window. Now, now something to think about here. Um, it might have been better for me to let them keep the window on the field to slow them down because things are not looking good for me. While I do have a Clyde of Heart, a uh, Pellerino, and a Celiac, these are these are great. This is plenty enough for most decks. But it's not against this deck. They're gonna get to banish a card here, um, which they banished. They banished my Drusworm, which I totally um, believe that's a, that's a good option for you, based on this graveyard. Getting to hit their Druva Swarm, because most people are going to only be playing one, that's a great a great choice, just to stop that engine from performing super well. So, they did that. They've got the Magma on hand, um, I mean on field, and they're going to get to add the Druva Swarm from deck to hand. So now, my opponent is starting out with seven cards in hand. Twelve cards of potential utility in the grave. Um, so... Anything I do, um, I'm just dead. So right here, they could go ahead and set up the play to bring back Merli, pop this, mill eight. So they've already got a huge play going on. If I stop this, no matter what I stop, they can either Madura, shuffle it, or they can end up uh, banishing it with Druid, 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 uh, Druid Swarm and creating even more problems for me. So I'm dead. Very, very dead. You see how quick, it's like an avalanche, man. It just, things just fly. Uh, so, man, Dweller is is a priority. You gotta make Dweller. If you cannot make Dweller, you have to find access to cards like Madura or um, Keldo in order to at least manipulate the opponent's graveyard as you're moving about. Um, but there's no guarantee. Like my little joke suggested, um, call it the exchange of the luck because both players are just going to be milling. 
you don't know what you're going to be milling. You don't have control over it. Um, the decisions you make before the mills are the ones that are going to win you the game. And that being specifically, how do I get these engraved? How do I make sure I can stop them? How do I make Dweller? What effect do I stop? Do I even want to activate my mill five or not when the time comes? Those are decisions you will have to make. As always, I strongly recommend you, you know, use your Shine, Shiren, rely on your Shiren, use your Reinhardt, use your Merlee, use your effects to get your mills started. Try to facilitate some protection before you start using the Ishizu cards. So that's all I've got for you guys. Um, if you stuck around this whole time, you've become a better duelist, I guarantee it, even a little bit. I'm sure this, you know, hopefully helped you, but I'm sure it also presented you some questions. So please ask questions. If you have questions about any of this stuff, if you got opinions to share, throw them in the comment section so that someone else can uh, gain an opinion on it as well. I will respond and we'll see where we get. And yeah, try to really dissect this beast of a deck. And uh, we will see where this goes in the next, you know, few weeks, uh, what, what kind of decks um, populate how they end up looking what cards they end up playing but for now i hope this was a very good general scope of what to expect and uh, i hope you find a way to make your perfect ichizu deck and play it well so thanks for sticking around i will catch you guys in the next one peace